Good morning guys. Today I'm going to take the GH5 out and do a video vlog, but I'm mainly going to be testing out the new GH5 and see how it performs as a vlogging camera. So I've got it set up with a Rode video mic on top, a Manfrotto mini tripod and a quick release on there. And I can tell you, having come from Sony cameras, it's really nice having this front-facing screen on here. And also, it's a little bit annoying how heavy the GH5 is compared to my Sony a6500. Now let's head down to the Botanical Garden and downtown. To start things off, I tried out the touch to focus and I started with the pinwheels in focus, then tapped the mountain in the background, which worked perfectly. Next, I tried out the manual focus at f2.8 with some very tight depth of field shots on these blossoms and some different flowers. One thing I noticed while shooting here is that the GH5 does not give priority to small objects in the foreground like flowers or branches. For a lot of these shots, I used manual focus, and some of the bigger flowers I used tap to focus. I shot most of this video in 4K at 60 frames per second to show what the GH4 is capable of. Personally, I think the video quality is remarkable. Everything looked really good. I also really, really like the colors. In the GH5 standard profile, I think the colors look like Canon colors, which have the slightest bit more pop but really just super realistic. There's also a natural profile that I think looks a lot like the Sony standard profile. Next, I wanted to compare the video quality of the GH5 to the Sony A6500. I used Premiere Pro to crop in to 400 and 600% to really get a close look at the 4K video. I think they both look phenomenal. For these shots, the GH5 is set to 4K at 30 frames per second, and the Sony is in 4K at 24 frames per second because the Sony can only use the full sensor in 4K at 24p. I did have the contrast up by plus one in the Sony standard profile. I didn't mean to leave it there, but I think it actually makes it look more like the footage from the GH5. The main thing I wanted to do here was compare how the video looks close up. After looking at all the footage, I think that they both had pretty similar video quality. They're both excellent, but the Sony only can do 4K at 24p if you want to use the whole sensor and get the best quality, while the Panasonic can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, which is awesome. I'm pretty much a 60 frames per second guy though. I just think it looks more realistic. Now on the other hand, the GH5 required a lot of attention to keep the focus dialed in on these close-up shots. I pretty much left the Sony on auto the whole time and it nailed almost everything. Also the screen on the Panasonic is much better than on the Sony. You can actually see it in the bright sun whereas the Sony you've got to use the viewfinder at all times. I also really love the flip around screen on the Panasonic. It's really handy as a YouTuber. Now on the other hand the Panasonic is much bigger and heavier and I definitely prefer the light small form factor of the Sony. So I just wrapped up shooting some test samples at the Botanical Garden. Um, I think it went pretty well and also got some comparisons with another camera as well. So off to the next thing, probably a little hike now. Check out this all the gear I gotta carry too. So this is to get those nice sliding shots. Would not be a proper YouTube vlog without a drone flight. So I just happened to have the new Phantom 4 Pro. Well, that was a great little place to hike to. Awesome view of Boise, and it's gonna be a great place to see a sunset, so I'm definitely gonna go up there again 
So I'm in downtown Boise to shoot some sample footage on the GH5 and also have lunch with my wife. That's a funny tripod. Yeah. Thanks. So this was early on when I was still learning the camera and you can see our pictures are a little bit soft. Since then I've turned on the face tracking mode and I put it in AFF so it's continually adjusting and that seems to help a lot for vlog style videos like this one. I think the Panasonic might have a little bit better stabilization than the Sony because here I'm not even trying and it's doing pretty good and I don't even have the electronic stabilization on. So the river has been flooding because we have record snowpack and it's been raining and they're predicting more rain. So I really wanted to come over and take a look and see what it's looking like. Oh wow, I can see it now and it is like the highest I've ever seen it. This is crazy. This bridge that is normally like, uh, I don't know, a big tall jump, like 20 feet off the water, is now like five feet above the water. There's actually, it looks like a park employee over here shutting down the bridge. So this thing right here we used to call the pump house and people would jump off it about 10, 15 feet into the water and you can see you could just basically step into the water now. Crazy. So that river might be about the highest I've ever seen it and they're gonna raise it a little bit more soon. So here I wanted to check the focus control of the camera so I stepped into the shot and it took about two to three seconds to lock on and then once it did, it locked on well. I moved towards the camera and it stayed on tracking me. This is pretty slow, quite a bit slower than the Sony in fact, but the crazy thing is that the GH5 can focus pretty fast if you do one trick. If you press the shutter button halfway down, it will quickly change focus and it does a pretty good job. So this tells me that it's capable of focusing quickly, but maybe Panasonic just needs to add a near object priority mode in a firmware update. Now we're looking at the Sony, and as you can see, it just nails the focus every time. And this is actually just in full auto mode. I'm not touching anything, I haven't changed any settings. It just gets it every time. It's not that the Panasonic has a problem with autofocus, you just need to give it a little extra tension and look at the front facing screen to make sure that your focus is good. Now let's look at time lapses on the GH5. The way I like to do it is with variable frame rate, which lets you shoot straight to video from anywhere from two frames per second for a time lapse all the way up to 180 frames per second for slow motion video. So here I shot this time lapse in full ultra high definition and that lets you slowly zoom in in editing to get this effect. The Sony will let you shoot all the way down to one frame per second video, but the high speed video only goes to 120 frames per second, so it's not as good a slow motion as the Panasonic. Actually, I sped these videos up about three times faster in Premiere because the cloud motion looks better if you go a little bit faster than what the camera can do. Now let's take a look at the slow motion 180 frames per second video that the GH5 can shoot. And this is full 1080p video, so the quality is really nice and it does a great job. The Sony can only shoot at 120 frames per second, which looks good, but the 180 starts looking really awesome. And of course we know phones can shoot at 240 frames per second, but it's only in 720p and 1080 really does look a lot nicer. So just a day or two after I shot this vlog, we got a freak snowstorm in the springtime and it was pretty crazy having all the flowers up and it's snowing heavily on top of them.
And finally we come to one of the biggest surprises for me about the GH5, and that is that the night mode looks great, I think. This is all at 3200 ISO and uh, f2.8 on the lens, but I think the quality is great. It's maybe slightly more vivid and bright than in real life, but I think it actually looks awesome. Now if we compare it to the Sony, the Sony right here is running at 6400 ISO on an f4 lens, which is all that I had. And I think it looks a little bit more true to real life, but we're also getting to the point where we don't have enough light to go any darker. All right guys, I just wanted to give you an idea of the kind of quality and features that you're gonna see on the GH5 and a frame of reference by comparing it to the A6500. Both cameras have amazing image quality, but I think the A6300 has better focus, but the GH5 is more versatile, has higher frame rates, and that flip out screen that is so nice to have. I'll have links to all the gear from my vlogging setup and the cameras in the video description down below. And hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys and as always, aloha.